everybody, I'm Tom, and I come from a small indie studio in the UK called Inkle, uh, where we make small, in well, sorry, very, very large interactive stories using text. Our best-known game is 80 Days, which won the IGF for Narrative last year, and we recently rebuilt it in Unity for desktop platforms. And you might also know us from our Sorcery series, which has also just made the leap onto Steam. So I'm going to talk to you today about Ink, which is our newly open-sourced dynamic script writing tool that you can use to build branching dialogue trees, like the ones you might have seen in a Bioware or Telltale game. Uh, and in particular, about the open source Unity plugin that integrates Ink seamlessly into the Unity engine, and it provides everything you need to write, test, and play your stories. I'm going to show you a few demos later on, and if you'd like to follow them along or hack away while I talk, you can follow that link. It's going to be on the next slide, too. So Ink was the first thing that Joe and John, the two founders of the company, made and it served as the backbone for every game we've made over the last four years. And it was also used by Stoic for their Banner Saga series. It's evolved a lot over the four years, and it's become stable, flexible, and powerful. We decided to open source it at GDC this year when we realized just how many developers were using Excel to store their text or using like notepads to write their dialogue, and we just thought this is just awful. So we've given it away entirely for free, along with all of the Unity tools you need to write a story which allows writers to create complex branching narratives from a friendly interface without needing any additional tools. So you could use Ink to build a choose-your-own-adventure story, or even just to store large amounts of non-interactive text. But its real strength is in writing dialogues with lots of options and branching. It's built to be massively scalable. 80 Days has more words in it than the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it's just shy of the King James Bible. So this is what Ink looks like in practice. Uh, this is a small snippet from the start of 80 Days. Um, sort of like a traditional programming language, Ink is written entirely in text, using special markup to denote choices and other syntax. So the syntax is kept really, really minimal. Even this demo that uses some of the more advanced features of the language, um, the simplest valid Ink file would contain absolutely no syntax at all and would just be read as multiple lines of text. So I'd like to quickly show you how this actually works when you play it into Unity. This is the bit of the talk that potentially could go wrong because technical difficulties. All right, where's the play button? Yeah. All right, so <laughs> this is the story. Sorry, it's quite small. Um, I'm just going to play it through quickly. If you've played 80 Days, you might recognize some of it. It's English gentlemen speak. Cool. So I'd like to show you how that actually looks when we compare it against the script. So ink flows downwards, and as you make choices, it allows you to branch. And you'll see the different indentation levels here. These are the, the nesting levels of the choices. So you see the first thing that we're looking at is this first bit of content. I looked at Mr. Fogg followed by choices that are denoted here with these asterisks. So you'll see we're seeing this line, and then we're skipping all the way down here to this line. So if we make the second choice, we'll head straight to this line at the end. And there we go, and that's the end of the story. And if we click the first choice instead, it will now open up this entire branch. And what we'll see is these two choices. And we have the, um, the number of asterisks denotes the branching level of that choice. So we're going to click this, and you'll see these two choices here, this one and this one. So I, I don't want to show you Ink too much. I just want to give you a sort of quick idea of how it sort of actually works, what it's actually doing. Right. So why did we make Ink? It's generally pretty common to hear writers complain about how games suffer from writers basically being excluded from the game-making process. They're brought on late. They work without actually seeing their work in context. Like, they won't even see what they've written until, like, in the game until it's been shipped. And they often don't have the best tools. So Ink and the Unity plugin have been developed to allow writers to write faster with more flexibility and integrate themselves more into the development process. So I'd like to run over some of the core features of Ink and show you how they reflect that goal. So the majority of well-known interactive fiction tools, like Twine, uh, are essentially the end-to-end -end solutions. They're amazing for letting a writer produce something like a, a finished work alone, but they're not designed to be used on larger projects. 
Ink is first and foremost a language, and it's designed to be used as middleware that makes it incredibly flexible and skinnable while keeping your narrative and game content separate. It's also very portable. When we ported 80 days from native iOS to Unity, we didn't have to touch the story files. It all just came across. All you have to do is port the ink runtime, which some other developers have already done outside of Unity. The runtime I'm going to show you is written in C Sharp, so anything in, in Unity will work fine. Um, but if you end up switching to or from Unity later on, or you only use Unity for prototyping, that's fine. You can still write all of your content and then bring it across. So Ink is essentially a programming language for writers, which writers always get really scared about, but it isn't scary, I promise. And it's written using a text editor. And we often get asked why Ink doesn't use like a visual node-based system, like the one that was just on screen there. Uh, and the answer is that we feel that nodes are ultimately limiting. In the same way that you can develop a game in a visual scripting tool like Playmaker or Blueprint, which are wonderful solutions for simpler projects, but they can limit your potential, we feel that writing interactive stories in a similar system will hold you back for the same reasons. Like when you see the story graph, you probably get a really great sense of how the story's gonna flow, you can trace it with your eye, but they take way more time to produce, they aren't flexible, they make it very difficult to write paths that will loop or combine in interesting ways, or do anything more than just branch downwards. They require specialist tools that are often not portable, and they don't scale very well to very large projects. And as you've seen, we can finish this story in like five to 10 seconds if you choose a short branch. So if you're developing a game that you might take several hours to finish, you're going to need a ridiculous graph. Whereas if you're just using various text files, you can just do a control F in Sublime and you can find whatever you want so quickly. Um, we actually recommend Sublime, and we've written a syntax highlighter in it that's included in the Unity package, um, which makes it incredibly easy to find and edit content, to leave comments and to-dos all over your files, to use version control, and to share and collaborate with other writers. So probably the most notable feature of any interactive story is that the story appears to respond to the actions you've taken. In most languages, this is really hard to do because you have to leave hundreds of flags all over your game code and keep track of what choices players have made, who they've talked to, what items they have, and this is really fiddly and it's really time consuming and it's basically the reason why so few games actually remember more than a few choices. So 80 Days managed to include nearly 20,000 choices because Ink automatically remembers every choice you've ever made along with how many times you've made it. You can take advantage of this with the ability to write simple logic to declare variables, to use inline conditionals and change individual words and phrases in your story depending on what the player has done. And you can read and write these variables from and to your game code. So you can control the, the game with the story and the story with the game. Uh, finally, a really, really real problem when you're doing something as massive as, say, 80 days is that you've got hundreds of thousands of words and hundreds, potentially hundreds of thousands of choices, and you literally can't play everything in the game. You can't make every choice. So John, who uh, writes the majority of our games, has not played the majority of our games. He's written all of the words, but he hasn't played all of the content. He can't follow through all the paths. So Ink will give you a warning if you have a branch in your story that doesn't rejoin the rest of the story. If your story ends abruptly, it will tell you, it will provide you an error, and you, it will show you exactly what you need to do in order to fix that. Uh, you can also save and load state, uh, and the Unity package provides some other tools for testing that I will show you shortly. So that's a little bit about the language. I'd like to show you the Unity plugin now, and some more examples of writing ink in action. So, the Unity package basically provides everything you need to write and play Ink. And the purpose of the plugin is basically to remove all of the complexity from the setup uh, and encourage writers to write stories directly into your project's asset folder. Um, so this basically means developers don't have to waste time bringing across your story files into your game, and they don't need to waste time trying to hamstring it into your source control. And it lets writers just press play and play their stories. So the package does four things. First off, it provides an API that allows you to control the flow of an Ink story in your game from code. Secondly, it pr Ink requires compiling before you can use it. We've made this process basically invisible. Ink will automatically compile as, as soon as it's found in your assets folder, and as soon as it, you edit it at all, it will automatically recompile. You shouldn't really need to know that this process is going on at all. 
although we've also provided some options that allow you to uh, change how it works in the specifics in case you don't want that going on all the time. Um, we've also provided a custom inspector and custom icons, so you can quickly see any warnings, to-dos, and errors that happen to be in your ink files. And also a editor window that allows you to quickly play and test all of your stories. So I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a new story using this plugin in action. All right, so looks like this is still going. So what we're going to do is we're going to go create, and we're going to create new ink. And you'll see that it works just like when you create a new uh, C Sharp script. It will let you, uh, it'll save it in the same location that you're currently using, and it will prompt you to change the name. I'm just going to leave this one as it is. So we also have a, a template file in the plugin that allows you to change what the, uh, the, the new ink file will look like. In this case, it looks like this one has a choice in it and a little bit of content, so we can actually just go ahead and play it. So I'm just going to drag in the compiled ink story, which is this one here, I think, I can't see very well, into this field here. And this is the same script that we used just a minute ago to show you that 80 day script. And voila, this is ink running. And that was the story. Wasn't it great? So uh, what we can do now is we can quickly jump into that story. So this is our story. We can add in another choice here, again. And then we can change what happens when you click them. So when you click the first choice, you're going to get this. And when you click this one, let's just add a bit at the end. There you go. So that loading bar, that was it recompiling. And we don't need to do anything. It's recompiled into the same file, so it's still set up in the inspector. We don't need to update any references. So we can just hit play. Did I hit play? There it is. <laughs> and there it is. There's our other choice. And when you change that, you get that other line. So that is a simplified version of how easy it should be for your writers to actually change and play your content. So next up, I'd like to show you, oh, if I can see it, uh, what the inspector for an ink file looks like. So this is the inspector for a file that has an error. And you'll see that it's told us that we have an error here, what the error is, and also gives us a button that allows us to jump straight there. Uh, it will show us everything in the ink file. And this is what it looks like with a file with a to-do. It will tell you here, here's your to-do that you've written in. And this is what it looks like with a warning. And we've also overridden the uh, default file icon for a default asset which is what it actually, Unity actually thinks ink is. So we can give you at a glance information as to exactly what your ink file and what your story like, is doing. If there are any problems with it, if you need to revisit any of them, you can just quickly see that at a glance. All right. All right, so the next thing is the player window, which, I mean, if you're designing like a, a massive story, as cool as it is to just say you can just press play and jump straight in, chances are you're going to be starting right at the start of your story, and you probably don't want to do that, or you just don't want to have to play the game. You just want to test your story out, so that's fine. You can use the ink inspector we've got and literally just hit play here, and it will launch an editor window that we've built, and that allows you to step through your story in exactly the same way that you've just seen, but also jump to any point of your story, and you can type in the path of where you want to go here, and it will just snap you there. Um, this is the state of the story, and you can save and load. And if you had any variables in your story, you could also see all of them and edit them at real time, and then just keep testing what you're doing. So the idea is that it's just incredibly fast for your writers to edit a line and just try it out and see how it works in context. Uh, right, so finally, there's the runtime API, and I'll give you a quick overview of how that looks. So I'd like to show you the script behind this visual interface that I've just shown you here. Um, it's incredibly easy to interface with ink from your scripts. This is C Sharp. Um, so the first thing you need to do, God, I can't see a thing from down here. Um, the first thing you need to do is include ink.runtime here. Uh, you need to declare a new story here. Uh, when you want to create your new story, if we do want to wake, you simply construct it and you pass in your compiled story, which fit has JSON, and you'll see we've actually got a reference for that here. Um, so you're pretty much good to go. And then I just refresh the layout, um, and I show all of the content up on screen, and then I produce the choices. If you click a choice, we then call story.choosechoiceindex, which says pick that choice, please. 
and then we refresh the layout. Everything else is done for you. Ink will run through deciding what thing it needs to show you automatically, so you don't need to bother with any of that. And that's it. Everything else here just sets up the UI, the layout, and everything. So it really is just about like five lines of code to get a really basic story working. Um, where are we? Unity, yeah. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how you can skin ink in order to basically do something slightly cooler than just have these uh, really naff looking buttons on screen. So first demo I'd like to show you is how you might replicate the UI of the new Fallout game, in case you guys have played that. So the, some of the immediate differences is this script, instead of printing all of the content out in one big chunk, it will print out each of the lines individually. So as I click through this, we'll get each of the lines. And now we're being offered choices, and I've kept that bit of content up on screen for context so you know what your choice is about. Um, in the ink script, I've set it up so each time you're offered choices, you will always be offered four choices. We read them out as an array in the game code and just set them up with these four buttons we've already got, and you could link that to buttons on your controller if you wanted to. You click this, we call make choice, and we keep going. Um, so one of the more interesting things about this demo is that, I'll show you this in the script, you'll see we were changing characters, oh, I'll have to find it first, we were changing characters depending on who was talking. And the way we've done this is quite simply just to prefix each line with, oh, can you see that? with the speaker. So in this case, it just says, Nick, colon this. And then when we parse the content as it comes in from ink into Unity, I detect that string, find the, the name, strip it out, and then switch the picture. And you could do something far more complex than this if you wanted to. You could, say, use it to trigger events in your game, to run animations, to change facial expressions, to change scene, whatever you wanted. And the last demo I'd like to show you is how you might use ink to run a pretty traditional JRPG. So this demo actually doesn't have any choices. Instead, I'd like to show you a little bit about how you could use ink for variables and state management, which is totally within its scope. You can actually store quite a bit of I guess what sounds often like logic or game logic into your story if it's what fits for your project. So in this case, the objective of this game is to try to get into this tent here, but this guy wants some money if we talk to him. Oh, he wants a gold coin. I don't have any. So let's see what these people want. This guy here, he doesn't like that knight. It's over in the left-hand corner. If we go talk to the knight, we can beat him up. And the old man looks pretty happy about that. All right. And now we get a coin. And now we can talk to the man. And this comes out next year on Steam. So this is like super simple, obviously. But the impressive thing about it is that all of this is in a single ink file, which looks like this. So you'll see that I've separated out a section for each of the characters in that scene. And they all have an interact section. And from the Unity side, what we have is each of these characters here have a path string. And each time we interact them, we click A on, on the character, we tell the ink to go to this path. Uh, so all of them go to character name dot interact. And then the ink decides, what do I want to do with interact? So in the case of the old man, if we've already hit the knight, then he's going to give us a reward, and he's going to talk to us. And if we haven't hit the knight, he's going to tell us about the knight. I mean, this is super rudimentary stuff for programmers. This is like really easy to do. But for a writer to be able to script a narrative scene on their own that actually has a little bit of logic in it without having to get a programmer involved is a really, really major thing. And I do realize I'm probably talking to a room full of programmers, so I'm sorry about that. So that is all of my ink demos. So I'd quickly like to run over a couple of the drawbacks of ink. The first one is we don't support WebGL yet, because we use DLLs as part of the, uh, the ink player uh, runtime. That's something we're looking at fixing. Um, it's just because of the way that Unity strips out when it creates the binary. But we'll have that fixed relatively soon, hopefully. The next one is localization. 
we simply haven't tried localizing any of our games because they have so much text in them, it's just sort of unfeasible for us to really seriously look at it doing it. There's absolutely no reason that you couldn't do it, but Ink hasn't really been built with it in mind. Um, if you were to do it, I suspect what you'd do is probably just to have two different stories, one that's in English, one that's in French, one that's in Dutch, whatever goes. And that would almost certainly be fine. It's just something we haven't tried. And the same goes for voice acting. Ink wasn't really built for voiceover in mind. We don't really have a system for syncing text and speech. But again, it's just something we haven't tried. I'm sure there is a way to do it. If you are looking at doing any of these things, please come to talk to us because we're very, very interested to basically any developers that are pushing Ink in these directions. Um, and we'd love to help you out to try to make that possible. So, wow, that's it. Uh, if you've got any more questions, please throw them my way. I think we've probably got seven minutes left. Great. Um, otherwise, you can find out more at the top link, and you can download the demos and start hacking away at the second link. Thank you. Thank you.